Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with another video tutorial. And today I'm just gonna share with you a few tips, tricks, and techniques for working inside of Ozone 8's EQ. However, most of these tips are applicable to many other modules, especially ones that have sort of the spectrum and stuff like that. A lot of it's gonna be about how to use uh, shortcuts and things like that to get more information out of the EQ. But a lot of these techniques like for instance, the first tip would be when moving up and down, if you hold shift, uh, I can't move left and right. So I'm the frequency position, it will be locked and I'll only be changing the gain. And it's the same way if I go right or left. Now, if I go up and down, I can't change the game, just the frequency position. So uh, stuff like that is gonna be applicable to all the different modules, not only inside of Ozone 8, but inside of Neutron, inside of Nectar and things like that. So I've already told you about this one. Uh, shift clicking and moving is a really good way to uh, hone in on exactly what you're looking for. Another one is if you alt click any node, uh, it will solo the frequency band. And that's going to be dependent on the Q value. So if I take the Q and shorten it, you can see that alt clicking is now a shorter solo there. It also, the default for this can actually be changed if you come into the settings. And let's see, spectrum equalizer, sorry. Uh, the alt solo default is right here and you can change that inside of here. While I'm inside of here, another, a couple of other things, you can show the musical notes. So if I click that on, you can see down here, you can see where C1 through C8 is inside of the spectrum. That can be helpful if you're looking for that. And you can also show the extra curves. This will show you the phase delay and phase response uh, that's happening due to the filtering that you're doing. So again, just more information so you can get exactly what you're looking for. To access that, you can actually right click inside of here too and go to the EQ options, okay? Uh, and then if I wanted to show extra curves, turn that off, boom, there we go. We also have spectrum options where we can fill the spectrum and show the peak hold and you can choose how long that peak hold lasts. And this is just very helpful if you look inside of here now. It's just, it's staying where it was a little bit longer so you have more time to make your changes to your filtering nodes. And again, that's also accessible if you right click inside of the spectrum, you can get to the spectrum options. Speaking of right clicking, if you right click any node, you can easily change the filter type. Uh, also, when you're hovering over a node, if you can use your mouse wheel to adjust the Q value. So you can adjust the Q value by using your mouse wheel, by these little handlebars, or by this slider down here in this window. If you want to hide this information, you can actually come over here and just click right here, by the way. This way you can see more information, or you can use the per band details down here, or you can see actually all the details for all the bands at one time by clicking right there. And of course, we've got our mid-side left, right, and I'm sure you already know about that stuff. That's not really giving you any new information, right? One other thing that's super cool that I just only recently came across was if, let's say I've got this filter node here and I wanna check out what it's doing if I'm boosting at 614 hertz and 756. So I've moved it from 614 to 756. If I shift and click here again, look it, it's gonna A, B that for me. Is that not dope? I had no idea about that until today. And that's what kind of inspired me to make this video. That's super helpful. And that works the same way with the gain. I'm at 1.5. What is if I cut that frequency range instead? Again, hold shift and click and I can A, B that. Super dope. Um, speaking of clicking, if I alt click, it will go back to zero. And that's also the same if you double click inside of the spectrum. If you double click anything, it's gonna go back to its starting point. But if I move the gain and the frequency, and then all click, oop, and then double click, it's gonna move both back. But if I move the frequency and the gain here, I can just all click and just change one at a time instead of moving the entire thing back to its complete starting point. And there's just a couple more things I wanna share with you. If you hold control or command, you do the micro movements. So I'm really moving my mouse, but it's moving very, very slowly. And that works the same way inside of the spectrum and any of these parameters down here as well. And one other thing you can do is zoom in over here so I can zoom way in. And if I double click, I'll zoom back out to position. And that's the same way here. If I wanna really zoom into the frequency range, I can do that here, zoom way in to really see what's going on. And again, the quickest way to get out of that, just double clicking. So really lots and lots of customization over here in terms of what you're seeing. 
and being able to control and manipulate inside of here with all these different tips, tricks, and techniques, I think is you know something you should definitely take into consideration. Shortcuts always work. Anyway, I just wanted to share with you some of those and because I think they're super cool and super useful and you might not know about them all, but it's definitely gonna help your workflow now that you know about them and you start implementing them in your production and sound design and whatever else you do with Isotope products. Anyway, that was a quick video. I hope you learned something. Make sure to give it a like, a share. You know what the deal is. Come on. Anyway, I'm Joshua Casper here. I'll see you in the next video.